Hi guys, Kaiser here, and welcome back to the Age of Empires 2 total conversion mod, Roma ad Bellum, or Rome at War. Now just to be clear, this is about the mod Rome at War, not the expansion pack, the Return of Rome, that is coming out in just a few days on May 16th. I'm really looking forward to that expansion pack and showing some of the unique features that are going to come with it. But today and tomorrow, we are looking at the Roma ad Bellum mod, Rome at War, and for today's video, I thought it would be fun to spotlight some of the new, unique features that Rome at War has introduced into the mod since the last time that I spotlighted this mod on the channel. Because they've done five things that are really unique. First, every civilization that you see here in the Civ list is now in the game. That's pretty wild because you might remember when I last spotlighted the video, about half of these civilizations were work in progress. They were, uh, you know, coming soon, but they were uh, not available at the time. Well, now each and every civilization is available in the game. Some of them do still have work in progress graphics. For example, with the Judeans, uh, their unique unit is going to use uh, old graphics and uh, maybe some of the architecture is not there. So graphically, some of these civilizations may need some work done on them. But as far as being able to play them and take a look at the unique abilities, the unique technologies, the unique unit, uh, it is all there to play. So you can now play all of these civilizations, which is really, really cool. On top of that, the Rome at War guys have just shadow dropped four new civilizations into the game. And I thought it would be fun in today's video to spotlight these four new civs and show off what they bring to Rome at War. So let's take a look at them and let's start with the Illyrians. Now all four of these civilizations are really focused on the early era of Roman expansion, the, the beginning stages of expansion of the Roman Republic and maybe the early days of the Roman Empire. And starting off with Illyria, this is a region to the north of Greece, kind of in the Baltic area. And uh, Rome fought in the Illyrian Wars uh, and so they were, again, an important part of the story of early Rome. And so, diving into their bonuses, or their boni, if you prefer, the Illyrians are an infantry and naval civilization. First, their Hemiolias and scout ships cost 40% less. Now, this is pretty cool because uh, one of the best features of Rome at War is the complete and total overhaul of the naval aspect of the game. Uh, so there are a bunch of new ships, a bunch of new options available for sea battles. And one of them is uh, the use of the Hemiolias and the scout ships. Hemiolias are like galleys. They're generally worse than galleys, but they do a lot of bonus damage against fire ships. So they're really good at fighting fire ships. And then scout ships are like scout cav of the sea. They're good at raiding. They're good at scouting. Uh, and so now those units cost 40% less for the Illyrians. So that's a really nice pickup. On top of that, ships, all ships, move 10% faster. And I think that makes them very strong on the sea. It suggests that more often than not, the Illyrians will choose where and when they want to fight and when they want to retreat. Uh, that is pretty cool for the Illyrians. On top of that, you get the Long Swordsmen available in Age Early. Long Swordsmen are kind of like the Cavalier of the Infantry line, right? And so pushing them from the Imperial Age up into the Middle Antiquity Age, Roman Wars version of the Castle Age, means that they have pretty strong infantry options. And then their gold miners drop off 10% more gold. So that's kind of a, um, a version of the most recent Malian bonus in AoE 2 where you're both getting more gold than your opponent and you're collecting it faster. So really nice bonuses for the Illyrians. Their unique units are the, they get the Polydynastus, or the Polydynastai. Um, Polydynasti, actually, in Latin pronunciation, I believe. Polydynasti, uh, they are infantry units with very strong attack. They don't have the most HP in the game. They don't have a lot in the way of armor, but they hit hard. Very strong hitting unique units uh, there with the infantry. And then they get the Liburna which is a ship, and the way I've seen it described is uh, it is a ship that does bonus damage to other sort of unique unit Imperial Age uh, naval units. So it's, it's a really good, almost kind of like a samurai of the sea, an anti-unique uh, unit ship. <laughs> uh, 
so they get two very cool unique units. Uh, one that's, again, a very strong infantry unit. One that's very good in the sea. And then we get the unique techs, where, again, for Rome at War, you get two unique techs. Two in the Castle Age, or the Middle Antiquity Age. Two in the Imperial Age, and you have to pick one. They get either Dynastei. Uh, can train five free Polydynastei per town center. Polydynastei enabled at the town center. Which is, I thought that would be Polydynasty. But anyway, that's getting into Latin. We don't need to worry about that. So you can either train five free of these Polydynastus units per town center, and then they're enabled at the TC. It's kind of like a remix of the Sicilian's First Crusade, right? Where you get these units for free, and they're enabled at the town center. So that really opens up your ability to train these unique units. You're now no longer relying on one or two castles to produce these units. Uh, so that's pretty cool, but you do have to train them. So it takes time to train them, and that's time that you're not spending producing villagers, right? So there's that. Or you get the Schmarjet Helmets. You get a pick. Dynastai or Schmarjet Helmets. Infantry gain a charge shield against projectiles. So that's like the Shravamsha Rider shield put onto all of your infantry. And I think that's really interesting. I think you pick Dynastai if you're going for a, a timing attack. You want to try to end the game early. And you think these unique units can really help you push it over the edge. I think that's a good choice. But if you expect the game to go long, I'd go Schmarjet Helmets. Just not only because your militia line and your unique units get access to that shield, but then in a late game scenario, gold is run out and you're going pikemen versus skirmishers. I think these helmets could be a really big game changer. So that's pretty cool. Then in the Imperial Age, you get Sabina. Spearmen and Polydonastai pierce through targets. Now, I will admit, I have no idea what this means because I think spearmen have a range of one, and so do polydynastai. So, what does it mean that they pierce through targets? Does that mean that they ignore melee armor? I'm sure someone in the comments, maybe Conqueror will be able to chime in in the comments and, and provide some explanatory notes here. But uh, Sabina seems pretty cool. Uh, and then you have Ninum, archers and Liburnus gain plus one attack. So that's pretty cool if you're looking for... A lot of archer play to maybe support your infantry. I think Ninum could be a really nice pickup. I think that this is sort of inverted from the previous two, where Ninum would be good if you're trying to end the game while there's still gold on the map. But if you're going into a, a late game scenario, uh, strengthening your spearmen with Sabina would be a really nice choice. Looking at their tech tree here overall, they've got a pretty good archer line. You have the composite uh, bowmen. You have nearly a full blacksmith. Uh, you do have a full blacksmith as far as archers go. But you're missing out on the marksmanship technology, which allows archers to fire faster with 100% accuracy. That stings. So I think that they're pretty good as uh, maybe support for infantry play. Infantry is really solid. You get the full militia line. You get the full spearman line. You get supplies, forced march, arson. You got all of that. But what you're missing for both your infantry and the cab is the final armor tech. So that hurts, and you might want to pick up Smarjet Helmets just to kind of help cover for your weaknesses, at least as far as the Pierce armor goes, between those two. The Stable Line, you get the Light Cab, but not Auxiliary Cab. You've got the Heavy Cab, the Cavalier, right? But not the Paladin, the Imperial Cavalryman. Uh, you don't get Bloodlines, but you do get Husbandry, so they really don't have the best Stables in the world. Um, I don't think it's as bad as it could be, but not the best. Good Blacksmith. Great shipyard. You are missing out on the Quadrarine. Interesting. But of course you do get that unique unit. And then in the University, you've got a lot of good stuff, including uh, Ballistics. You do get... Um, let me see. Do they have Advanced Weaponry? There it is. Advanced Weaponry is kind of the chemistry of Rome at War, so you do get access to that. So that's pretty good. Overall, pretty good. All right. Let's go to the next civilization. We have, after the Illyrians, we have Pontus. Uh, another important civilization in the early age of Roman expansion. Uh, an additional town center can be built in the early antiquity age. So right here we have the, um, um, I'm forgetting the names, the, the Cuman uh, second TC bonus here available for Pontus. Their fishing ships cost 33% less. Chariots attack 25% faster, and auxiliary spearmen available in the Middle Antiquity Age. 
This civilization would be amazing on a map like Four Lakes. Or a map where you can, uh, I think, fish in peace. This would be amazing. You've got fishing ships that cost less. You're gathering more food faster. And then you can put those food, that food into your second town center in the early antiquity age, giving you an incredible boom. Then once you get to the Middle Antiquity Age, you've got chariots attacking 25% faster. Now, chariots are an alternative to the night line. They are um, they're slower. It describes them right here, uh, low speed and health, but they are powerful units which do bonus damage against infantry. So they're a pretty interesting choice available to some civilizations, and here with Pontus, their, their chariots attack faster. So they're able to apply that bonus damage to infantry, even more consistently than other chariots and I think that would make them a little bit better as an all-around option compared to cavalrymen. I don't know which one you would want to go for in kind of a jack-of-all-trades scenario but it certainly makes chariots more interesting for Pontus. They also get the auxiliary spearmen available in the middle antiquity age so you get the basically the halberdier right available in the third age meaning that you have an incredible anti-infantry option available there in the castle age. That's pretty cool. Their unique units are the cataphract, which is pretty different from the Byzantine cataphract. The cataphract of the Pontians uh, has, uh, kind of focuses as an anti-archer cavalry unit. It has a lot of pierce armor, making it very effective at running down archers, I would imagine does a pretty good job at raiding as well. You're absorbing TC fire and castle fire and tower fire a lot more effectively with the cataphracts, so that's pretty good. Uh, if I remember right, I don't think it has as much melee armor as the um, the Nightline does. So maybe if you're going into a you know a, a melee versus melee battle, you would want to go with the Nightline versus the cataphract, but. Definitely, if your opponent's going to archers, cataphract is a very good option. You also get access to the Imitation Legionary, which is the Diet Coke of Legionaries. It is a very strong, um, it's a heavy melee unit. I almost think of it like a Teutonic Knight. It has a lot of armor, it does a lot of attack. It, it's a very strong, solid all-around unit. What it does not have is the ability to switch from the the melee to the ranged mode, which we do see from the Romans. And if I'm remembering right, that is a feature of the Legionary. Yeah, it has a range and a melee attack. That's the Legionary and the imitation Legionary of Pontus does not get access to that. You just see here, Pontic, unique heavy infantry, strong versus melee units. Oh, we can actually, yeah, we can actually compare right here. So if you see the Imitation Legionary costs a little bit more than the Legionary does. It has a little more HP, a lot more attack. Look at that, 10 attack versus 5. Not as much melee armor. That's one melee armor, one pierce armor versus 2 and 2. So the Legionary is better armed, but then the Imitation Legionary has a little more HP and a lot more attack. Interesting. Very interesting. All right. Unique text. At Parkies, town centers make nearby villagers move faster and slowly regenerate HP. That's pretty cool, and I think that's a bonus particularly for a farming economy. That means your farmers that are going to sit around the town center, they're going to move faster. Uh, they're also a little bit more resilient to raiding because they do slowly regenerate HP. That's pretty cool. I think that's a good you know, food bonus for a civilization that wants to go into infantry or cavalry. You can pick that, or Asiatic Vespers. Villagers are stronger in combat. Now, I don't know what this means. Theoretically, it depends on the numbers. Uh, I suppose if your villagers become as strong as champions, then you might want to go with Asiatic Vespers. But I think in practice, more likely than not, without knowing what this number is, I, I think Eparchies is what you go 95% of the time. Uh, even if this is like, uh, you know, you, you might want to meme with that kind of, uh, what is it, the Spanish unique tech. Um, and I'm forgetting the name of it off the top of my head. But uh, you don't want to fight with your villagers. That's not what you build vills for. And so uh, this is kind of a backup defensive play. And you've already got defensive options here with the Parkies. It, it helps your villagers move, uh, uh, regenerate health. So, yeah, better to just fight with, a, with your army 
and let your villagers do villager things, I would go with the Parkies 99% of the time. Then in the Imperial Age, you get to pick between Cappadocian Cavalry. Cav units gain a charge attack. Whoa. So we have that um, Burgundian Custilier bonus now on all of your cavalry units. I don't know that it's as strong as the Custilier, but you get a charge attack, making all of your cav units do that extra uh, attack. Or the Chalca Spides, Spearmen gain 30% HP. Again, for me, this falls back to, do you expect the game to go into that trash war period or not? If so, then I think Chalca Spides is a very interesting choice. Um, kind of combines nicely with you know, if you get the Auxiliary Spearmen in the Castle Age, well, then what do you get in the Imperial Age? Well, you can give them plus 30 more HP, which is pretty cool. You get that, so they have very strong Halberdier. Or, you know, while you still got gold, you can improve your Knights, you can improve your faster attacking Chariots, right? Or, you know, even if it does go into the Trash War phase, your Light Cav and you get Auxiliary Cavalry, now also get that Charge Attack. So, boy... That's an interesting choice. I think Cappadocian Cavalry might be the more exciting pick up there. Uh, probably depends on your, your game, but I like it. I like it. Let's take a look at what they've got. Archer line, you're missing the Composite Bowman. You're also missing the Crossbowman, which Enrollment War is kind of the parallel to the Hand Cannon. Okay, So you don't get access to the, the, the final Composite Bowman upgrade. You're missing out on Crossbowman. You do get Heavy Cav Archer with Marksmanship and Parthian Tactics. Your Blacksmith. You're missing the final Archer Armor upgrade. You're missing the final Melee Attack upgrade. But you do get all of the Archer Attack upgrades and you get all of the Melee Armor upgrades. So that's interesting. I think then that your Heavy Cav Archer, that's a really interesting choice for Pontus. You don't get a lot of bonuses for it, but it could be a really nice choice. Plus, cheaper fishing ships would mean that you could afford more Heavy Cav Archers, I suppose, as well. Um, interesting. Okay. The barracks line, you get out everything up to champion. You're missing it on champion. You get really amazing spearmen. And who cares about the militia line? You get the imitation image, uh, the imitation legionary, which is really, really cool. So a very strong uh, frontline unit there. Not as well armored as the legionary, so I don't think it'll absorb as much damage. But if they are allowed to close ranks and actually start hitting things, ouch. Ouch, look at this. 13 attack on an infantry unit. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. They don't get supplies, which I don't think supplies would affect the Imitation Legionary anyway, so that's one more reason to go with this unit. You do get Force March, you do get Arson. The Cav line um, looks pretty good. You are missing the final Knight upgrade, but you do get the Elite Chariot. Yeah, I think the Elite Chariot does more damage than the Heavy Cav, so yeah, 12 versus 13 over here. Uh, armor... You, you, you have one less pierce armor. Build time is faster, though. Yeah, I, I think Elite Chariot is probably what you want to go as Pontus in the late game uh, with your cab. Siege looks okay. You're missing out on Heavy Scorpion, Siege Onager, and Siege Ram. All right. I, this is a civilization that has a lot of booming potential and a lot of really interesting options. I think there's some flexibility with Pontus that makes them pretty exciting. All right, then we have the Seleucids. Uh, the Seleucid Empire was one of the four kingdoms of the Diadochi that emerged after um, the Alexander the Great's empire split into four. The Seleucids were one of the four, and um, my mind goes to biblical history, figures like Antiochus IV Epiphanes and that, that type. But we do see a lot of warring going on between uh, the Seleucids and Rome, uh, kind of in that transition period in the late days of the Republic, uh, moving into the early days of the Empire. Uh, so, Seleucids. Look at this. They are an infantry, cavalry, and cavalry archer civilization. Which is interesting, because that's kind of what I thought about Pontus. They, they were flexible. Let's see what the Seleucids have. First, heavy cav archers are replaced with the Afractoi. Interesting. So, let's compare. All right, here we go. So we don't get Heavy Cav, but we have the Afractos. Uh, okay, they're Unique Heavy Cav Archer replacement with Increased Range and Armor. So the attack, seven attack, seven attack. Armor and Armor, Pierce Armor, zero and one. Okay, so Afractos have one Pierce Armor. The Heavy Cav Archer has zero Pierce Armor. 
the they have a little bit less HP but more pierce armor. Uh, it says on the tech tree here. It says the range is the same, four and four. But it says increased range and armor, so maybe that number is off. Interesting. Okay. Clearly, what we do see though is that this is a unit that has more armor, and yeah, it looks like it's almost the same. I'm guessing that it should probably have one more range. So this is a unit that fires further, does more damage. Um, probably will take... It doesn't have as much HP, so if you can get into range, especially with melee, you'll do more damage to the Aphractos than normal. But it should be a little bit more resilient against Skirms and Archers, you know, ranged units doing pierce damage. Aphractos will be even better than the Heavy Cav Archer. Cool. Infantry armor upgrades apply to cavalry. What? Oh, I love that. So you don't get access to the cav armor at all because the infantry armor applies to both units. And that's really cool, not just because you're saving the resources, right? You know, you're, you're saving the, the food, the gold that goes into picking up those techs. But even more importantly is you're able to tech switch much more effectively. You know, let's say that you were going into the, the night line. You know, you're trying to attack with your knights, and then you realize that's not working, they're massing up a lot of spears, and you need infantry in order to fight these spears off. Well, now, you can go into that infantry line, and the armor is already there. You don't need to worry about moving over to the blacksmith, putting in the tech time, putting in the resources, uh, picking up those techs. It's very easy to forget them. The Sully kids, you have that flexibility that is really cool. Camel archers do plus one attack. Camel archers, which I think we do see in the... Um, they're actually in the archery range. Camel archer. So this is a mounted archer that does bonus damage against cav archers, and now they do an additional plus one attack overall. So, uh, let's see. A six attack versus seven attack. I don't know if that's recognizing. Let's, let's check. I'll go to the picks. Oh, okay, wow. Okay, so it looks like with the Cellu kids... They get 7 attack by default, they get one more attack because of this bonus, so it should be 8 attack. Um, and I think that just makes them a better all-around unit. Uh, not only will they do well against Cav Archers, but they'll do a little bit better as a Jack-of-all-trades Cav Archer, which is pretty cool. They do cost a little bit more, so you might still want to go Cav Archer, but then again... Yeah, well you get the Aphractos, yeah. So, I think Cav Archer is still a good choice, but... You can fall back on Camel Archers, and they're they're good as a jack-of-all-trades kind of unit as well. At least not as bad as they would otherwise be in that role. Farms occupy less space. What? Did they, like, change the model of the farm so that it's smaller, so that you can, you can put more farms closer to your town center? That's pretty cool. Which, again, is really great for a... Uh, a cavalry civilization or an infantry civilization. You need a lot of food and making those farms more compact so that you can afford to put more villagers on, you know, into that uh, those tight spaces. That's really cool. That's a really nice bonus. The unique unit is the Agema, which to my understanding, I, I toyed around with it a little bit, it's kind of like a heavily armored version of a Step Lancer. So it's a little expensive, it's got HP, it's got armor, but its main feature is it has that plus one range, just like a Step Lancer. So it's very good at, um, I think, I think what the same things that Step Lancers are good at. You know, they're they're good at knocking out uh, priority targets like monks and siege units. I think they have, if I remember right, they they have a lot of Pierce armor, so they're good against archers. Uh, perhaps not as much melee armor as a typical knight. So you may not want to go a gamma in that situation. But that extra range is, uh, I think, very useful and more useful than you might expect. So the Agema, a very interesting choice there. The Aphractos we've already talked about, and then the Imitation Legionary, which we've discussed with Pontus. Their unique text, the Katakoi. Military production buildings work 25% faster. Ooh. Whoa. That's available in the Castle Age, and that's all military production buildings. That means they're going to research text faster. That means they're going to produce every military unit on the board faster. This is the Frank uh, stable bone, or is it the, the Franks or the um, the uh, um, the Hun? The Hun bonus. I think it's the Huns with the, the faster working stables. So you got the faster working stables, the Britons faster working archer range, the Celts faster working siege, 
workshop bonus, all wrapped up into one. All military buildings work 25% faster. That is amazing. Or the political way, cavalrymen cost 40% less gold. So your nightline costing a lot less gold. Which is more important to you? Time efficiency or gold efficiency? Really interesting. And that might depend on the map. I think if you have access to a lot of gold, you're safe on that. Uh, Catacoy is what you want. You, you, you get a strong economy going, and then you're able to just mass up waves of units better than any other civilization in the mod? Question mark? Right? Uh, I think that's a really good choice. Or, maybe if gold is a little bit more sparse, or you're more concerned about uh, being able to have more gold than your opponent, picking up that pull bonus. Uh, Cavalrymen costing less gold. That's really nice. In the Imperial Age, Elephantry Core. Elephants cost 30% less. So now, that's not just gold cost. Let's, let's scroll over to the elephant line here real quick. 140 food, 85 gold. Wow, that's an expensive unit, but it's a strong unit. You get access to the elite battle elephant, and then 30%, that's what, 14 times 3, 42, and then 8.5 times 3, uh, something like 25, 26 gold you're saving there. Uh, that's a lot of food and a lot of gold you're saving with each unit, so... You want to go into Battle Elephants. Wow, that's a really good pickup. Or, Kira Speed Ace. Spearman gain plus five melee armor. Amazing. In those Trash War situ situations. Hmm. That, I think all four of these texts are very interesting. Definitely depends on the, the game, the situation. Uh, I think they could all be valid in different choices. Pretty cool. Pretty well in the team bonus. Markets cost 50 less wood. I don't think we talked about the Pontus bonus. What was that? Ports and shipyards for a plus five pop space. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. All right. So the Southern kits, I like them. Let's take a look at their archery range real quick. Uh, you don't get Composite Bowman. You don't get Crossbowman. Uh, the Stable line. I'm sorry. The, the Barracks line looks good. You don't get Champion. You don't get the Legionary, but you get the Imitation Legionary. Um, Cav, you're missing out on the Auxiliary Cav. You do get the full Knight line. You do get those Elephants that might be a lot cheaper. You get Chariots, but not Elite Chariots. So I think... Unless you really want that anti-infantry cav option. Just go cavalry. Then. Siege Workshop. You're missing a lot of these final units. Uh, the blacksmith looks complete. Uh, actually, it is complete. Even better than complete because, you know, you've got infantry and cav in one tech there. The shipyard looks good. You are missing advanced platforms, but okay. You're missing the quinkerine. Uh, let's see. Yeah, and then the monastery doesn't look so good. The temple doesn't really look that good. You're missing a lot there. Okay. Next up. And I guess actually the last, this is the last sip. So we talked about Pontus, we talked about the Illyrians, Selicids, and here we go with the Syracusans. They're a naval and siege civilization. Advanced weaponry and crossbowmen are available in the Middle Antiquity Age. Whoa! So advanced weaponry, again, that's like chemistry, right? Available in the Castle Age, the Middle Antiquity Age, as well as crossbowmen, which is this game's version of the hand cannon. So this is basically the Bohemian bonus brought to the Syracusans. Syracuse, by the way, an island in the Mediterranean. Uh, the battlefield of Roman wars, the battlefield of Carthaginian wars, uh, famous for uh, Archimedes, one of the most famous mathematicians and engineers. He developed things like the Archimedean Claw, the Claw of Archimedes, uh, which was used to defend uh, a city against a Roman naval attack. And uh, even rumored, I, I forget if this is confirmed or not, that he has the, uh, the Archimedean Mirrors. That he built these giant mirrors, uh, this Death Star laser beam, to, to fight back against the, uh, uh, the Roman, uh, Roman attack. And so, uh, just a very technologically savvy civilization, thanks in large part to this one figure, Archimedes. And so I, I think we're going to see that theme in this civilization, which are, they're pretty cool. So we get access to the crossbowmen in the Middle Antiquity Age, like the Bohemians with their hand cannons. Quadrireams and quinquireams, whoa, cost 40% less. Now let me confirm that. The quadrireme, now is that an upgrade to the galley line? No, it's not. You get the monoreme, the trireme, the bireme, and the trireme. The Quadrireme is a very powerful Imperial Age uh, technology, uh, a unique unit. 
It's not a unique unit. A very powerful naval unit. Available in the Imperial Age. Fires multiple projectiles. If I remember correctly, at least when I last played Rome at War in the naval aspect, the Quadrarine was just better than the Trireme. I think it's more expensive. And this here is 90 wood, 30 gold. This is 200 wood and 100 gold. But it was powerful. And if you could mass up Quadrarimes, uh, you just won against most things. So uh, the fact that they are now 40% cheaper, that's amazing. Like, the main reason you wouldn't want to go into Quadrarium is because of their expense. So here you're saving, let's see, 10% is 20 wood and 10 gold. So that's 40 gold and, uh, what is that again? 20, 40, 60, 80 wood that you're saving there on every Quadrarium and every Quincarim. Amazing. Siege Workshop units cost 15% less. Not surprising. Blacksmiths and Universities save 100 wood. Wow, okay. Very technologically focused. Fishing ships have double hit points, two extra pierce armor, and work rate increases by plus five for age. Really nice if you're playing on a naval map. Or even better, again, a map like Four Lakes, I think, where you can just fish in peace. I like it. The unique unit is the Oxybelis, which is uh, Oxybelis. It's a very interesting unique unit. It is like a scorpion, but it does bonus damage to units the more resources those units cost. So it's, here's how I understand this, and, I, and you know maybe I'm wrong on this, but here's my understanding based on toying around with the unit. It seems like if you want to use a scorpion to go up against a bunch of trash, you know, you want to clear out skirmishers or uh, pikemen or whatever, then go with the scorpion line. Scorpions cost less, or, or the workshop costs less, right? And you get access to... Yeah, you get access to the Heavy Scorpion. I think you get access to... If we go to the University here. You do get access to not just Advanced Weaponry, which you get early, but uh, Siege Engineers as well. So I think you would go Scorpions if you're wanting to clear out trash units. But if you're wanting to maybe build a Scorpion unit against expensive units, like uh, maybe a lot of Elephants or... Uh, you know, archers or cav units, the Oxybelis would be a very interesting choice. I don't know. You know, I wonder if archers, because it, it is for every 10 resources. It doesn't specify between gold and wood. So let me just check that real quick. Um, skirmisher is 25 and 35, so that's 60 resources. The archer you know, has 70 resources. So I don't know what the the number would be, but it would be particularly effective against a unit like the Cavalrymen that's, uh, you know, 135 resources per unit, or the Battle Elephant here is 200 plus resources. Oxybelis would be a very good choice in those sorts of situations. The unique tech, Lex Hieronica. All gold income is 10% faster. Okay, so that's not going to give you more gold, but the gold that's on the map, you're collecting faster. And that's all gold. So that's not just gold miners, but that's relics, that's trade. Anything that gives you gold, Lex Hieronica gives that gold to you faster. Archimedean Defenses is your alternative. Towers and forts fire scorpion bolts as their primary projectiles instead of arrows, and towers gain plus three attack. That is an amazing choice for a uh, kind of a defensive shoring of your economy. I like that a lot, and it's very thematic too with, uh, again, Archimedes and what he did for the Syracusans. So yeah, I, I like, I, I think thematically, I just got to go with that one. That's just really cool. Your uh, Imperial Age options. Gastrofeats, crossbowmen fire a second projectile. So this is really neat for me because uh, like when you're playing Bohemians in AoE 2, you get hand cannons in the Castle Age, which is amazing. But if you don't knock out your opponent and you go into the Imperial Age, you might find yourself asking, well, what's, what, do, what do I do with my, my hand cannons? They're not any better than anybody else's hand cannons. They're just, you know, they were just available earlier. So I guess I could mass them up and I have that momentum. But if you lose the momentum, your hand cannons are no better than anybody else's. It might even be worse than others like the Burgundians or the Hindustanis. Well, here, you've got an option to make your crossbow and fire a second projectile. You've been massing them up in the Middle Antiquity Age, hit Imperial Age, and now you've given them that extra strength, which is pretty cool. I don't know whether the second projectile does as much damage as the first, or if it's a weaker projectile. I don't know, but that's still a nice bonus. Or, Lithobolos, 
Heavy Siege Onagers. Fire with 100% accuracy and deal blast damage. <gasps> That's amazing. Your Siege Onagers. Which I, okay, I don't know what a heavy Siege Onager is. I'm assuming they just mean your Siege Onagers, right? But they fire, or unless that's, no, 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 that's not the, uh, the, wait a minute. Wait, oh, no, I'm sorry. No. Good, good course correct there. The Heavy Siege Onager is Roman War's version of the Trebuchet. So now, you're firing with 100% accuracy, which is like the, if that's the Hun unique tech. So they fire with 100% accuracy, and they deal blast damage, which is the Briton Warwolf unique tech. So those two things are combined here with Lethal Bolos. Heavy Siege Onagers, they fire with 100% accuracy and deal bonus uh, blast damage. That's really cool. And that would make them pretty effective at uh, supporting your army. And um, I, th I think you go with Gastrofeats if you're needing your crossbowmen to clear waves of infantry. But if you're dealing with a lot of skirmishers, I think Lethal Bolos would be a really good choice. Your Trebs then kind of serve as a good makeshift artillery. To, to clear out ranged units. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool options. Then team bonus, farm upgrades provide 50% additional food. Nice. That's a really amazing team bonus uh, that the Syracuse is bringing. This is a strong Civ. This might be one of my new favorites in the Roman War mod. All right. That's it, guys. You see here four new civilizations on top of all of these other civilizations who are all available in the Rome at War mod. This is available to download right now. This is a really amazing total conversion mod. And if you look in the description below, I will leave a link to my previous video where I talk about how to download and install this mod. So take a look at that. Enjoy these civs, guys. Uh, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this breakdown, like and subscribe to the channel. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. For now, this is the Iron Kaiser signing off.